GPUs have basically sparked an AI boom. They've become an integral part of modern supercomputers and they essentially continue to drive advances in deep learning. Imagine training deep learning models without a GPU. And guess what? In today's video, I'll show you the amount of speed up that you can basically get by using an NVIDIA powered GPU as compared to a CPU on a deep learning task. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. Since I aim to do a basic benchmarking analysis, I'll go over a very simple data set, which is the Fashion MNIST data set. Let me start the discussion by importing the necessary modules. The first version of the model that I'll create is using the CPU that is present in the laptop. So it is here that I'll switch off the laptop's GPU and I'll do this by running the command tf.config.set visible devices and I'll pass in an empty list and a GPU parameter as well. The first step before I create a model is to have the data set handy. So it is here that I call the load underscore data function from the fashion underscore MNIST class and I'll save it into a tuple of variables called as xtrain ytrain and xtest ytest. I put in some assert statements to check if the size is exactly what I need. Now let's go forward and visualize the first training image. So as you can clearly see, this image is that of a shoe. And before I go forward and build a model, I'll have to do some amount of pre-processing as well. I'll also reshape my Y values. And since Y values are classes, I'll call the two categorical function so that I'm able to convert them into numbers. Now that the background work is done, the next piece is where I'll create a model. So I'll start by creating a sequential class and define it to a variable called as model. I'll add different layers to the model. I've added multiple convolutional layers as well as pooling layers. And at the end, I have a flattened layer and a dense layer. The dense layer will basically give me 10 outputs corresponding to the 10 different classes that are present in this particular data set. Now that the model structure is ready, let me go forward and show you the summary of the model. So this is basically the summary of the model, wherein there are total 27,114 parameters out of which all of them are trainable. So basically all the values for these parameters would change when I keep training the model. I now go forward and compile the model. Now I start my timer using a variable s. So I say time dot time. This is where my timer will start and I fit my training data set x train and y train and I want to train it for 25 epochs. Finally, the difference between the two is what I'm interested in. So that is something that we'll realize once we kind of execute the entire training process. So let's kickstart the training process as well. You might have guessed by now that the entire process would take a lot of time. So let me fast forward the entire video so that we reach at the end stages of the training. So the training has concluded and the entire process took around 16 minutes. So quite a lot if you ask me in terms of how complex the model was, it, it was a fairly simple model. Yet it's taken around 16 minutes for around 25 epochs. So yeah, that is what we have when we use a CPU. And if I go forward and evaluate the model performance, then essentially the accuracy on the testing data set is around 87%. So the model is fairly accurate, but it's taken a lot of time. Now here comes our savior, which is NVIDIA's GPU. So now let me carry out the entire same exercise using the Acer Nitro 5 laptop, which is equipped with NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. I'll again start by importing necessary modules. I'll now check if the GPU is present or not, which is where the command tf.config.list physical devices comes into picture. If a GPU is detected, then essentially you would have the values shown in this particular list, which is what you can see as GPU zero. I also run the command NVIDIA SMI 
that gives me a snapshot of all the processes that the GPU is currently executing as well as which GPU it is, what is the memory of the GPU. Now the entire process that I showed you in the CPU version remains exactly the same. Now let me come at the deep learning model training aspect. As you can clearly see the training is much more faster when you compare it to a CPU. So this was really quick. The overall time taken for training this model was around 160 seconds, which is way more than the 986 seconds that we had in case of a CPU. So this is something that I wanted to share with all of you today. If you're thinking of getting an RTX laptop, then NVIDIA is also providing an amazing opportunity for students. If you purchase an RTX laptop, then you can avail a deep learning instructor led certification course from Deep Learning Institute, which will give you a head start in your deep learning career. For more information, I'll attach the link in the description section of the video. Do check it out. Well, this is all that I had in today's video. I hope you found today's video informative. Thank you so much for watching the video.